So we're going to have our first cook and I am so honored that I'm actually going to do this. And this is a shout out to my uncle Jerry, who is no longer with us, but loved cooking spare ribs. And he was definitely the first person that ever uttered the words low and slow to me when it came to cooking. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch, because Ugh. life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms, like Facebook, Instagram, and X. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time my hair is wet and we have layer number one of mini on, you'll be alerted to it. Really glad that Allie's heat is working fantastic. It's a little brisk outside, It's but a little. It's, it's supposed to warm up. The weather here is really weird. One moment it's hot, one moment it's cold. One at one point it's rainy. Then it's like it looks like it's gonna snow. Then the sun is out. Like I don't know <laughs> how to dress. I'm glad we brought so many different clothes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Say that again. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad we brought a bunch of different clothes. But I was thinking we're finishing this trip up in Orlando, and I didn't bring any shorts. Okay, well, I don't think I did either, but here's the thing. But I do have tank tops. I could do jeans, tank tops. So all you're doing is de-layering as you head south. Get used to it for when we go to Alaska. Right. right? Um, so here's the deal. We're here in Elkhart. We've been here for a couple of days shaking down Alley. Uh, if you don't know what that is, if you're not an RVer, it basically means when you first buy an RV, you want to take it someplace local, someplace close, and camp in it for a few days and make sure everything works right. before you go out on the that road for a long time. Now, we're out on the road for a month, so what we decided to do was shake it down for a week near the factory where we picked it up. So if we bring it home and it turns out there's a whole bunch of problems, then we're going to have to go find a local dealership or repair it on our own or hire a mobile RV tech. Ain't nobody got time for that. So we decided since we're on the road anyway, just extend the trip, stay up here for about a week check everything and then what we're supposed to do if there's any issues we're going to bring it back to the factory on wednesday of next week to have them fix them but we haven't done any cooking in the rv yet we we've do only been in it for a couple of days need to test all of the things including the appliances yes so what i was thinking is today we're actually taking a ride over to see our friend josh the rv Yay, nerd at bish's rv yeah at bish's rv in cold water michigan we actually interviewed that him um a few weeks ago i'll leave a link for that video up it was here. fun it was a fun video um so we're going to head on over there just to say hello. What he doesn't know is that my plan is to actually bring a camera and just randomly pick a salesman and have them walk us through the buying experience to see, like, what is it like to shop there? Yeah, because everybody's not going to get to have Josh as, like, their well, salesperson. Well, he's not even a salesperson. So there you go. So you're not going to – he is awesome at, like, doing the reviews, but his bish is – just as awesome as Josh is. As Josh is. Yeah, it's like our friend Matt from Matt's RV Reviews. He works for General RV, but he's he's paid by General RV. So can you really trust General RV based on Matt? I mean, I love Matt. I'm not saying he's well, lying. and we had a good General RV experience. Right. So we knew that it was a good dealership after you know we had bought Eleanor from right. them. So I figure what we'll do is. While we're out, we'll find a grocery store and then find something to cook. And I think we should find something, like, complicated to cook. Yeah, because we need to use the oven. That's something that we don't normally do because it's an easy-bake oven. So we usually <laughs> avoid, you know, using the oven. But we need to test the oven. You need to test, like, the... The grill, the, the grill, griddle. Everything. All that. Because normally we just use air fryers and things like that when we're in the RV. So then I figured tomorrow we have the meetup. Yay! Where we're going to, I forget the name of the, the barbecue restaurant, but we're going to a barbecue restaurant. Yes, and we're going to go to the RV museum. And we're going to the RV museum. So tomorrow probably won't have anything, but then what we'll, we'll do is we'll cook again 
on Sunday. So this will be like a multi-day vlog. Well, we made it to the RV Hall of Fame and Motorhome Museum here in Elkhart, Indiana. And our friend Andy is right here. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. You made it. So we're thinking that this is the front. This is the, <laughs> yeah, front. That's the front. I was, I was parking. I, well, it's it kind of goes all the way around, and I had seen it from the interstate, but like called to confirm. Always called to confirm because even if something says it's open 365 days, I will be here the one day that they're like, oh, except for today. I'm the Wally World person. That is nice. This may actually dry. What the heck? This is where it is at. Look at this, Joe. It's made out of tent material. This would actually dry. Wow. You can use this to go to Alaska. This is rad. Yes, this is what you would take to Alaska so you don't like beat up alley with, with the roads. That's cool, dude. There's no door on the bathroom in that motorhome. Oh, we're not that close. <laughs> like you literally is walk anybody in. that close? There's no door. This is a public service announcement. If you are close enough to go to the bathroom, and we're talking number two in front of your partner, like you need to back up. Too close, too close. And the bedroom looks like an 80s bedroom. It does look like it's an got 80s a bedroom. mirror over the bed. I, I boom They could be the shooting cow. a porn in there. I did think it felt like a toy hauler back there. Did it feel like a toy hauler? A little bit. Like you could either have a bed back here or an ATV. It looks a lot two. bigger from the outside than inside. Inside looks really cramped. Well, I, I thought it was neat. But, but when you look at it from the outside, it's like that's going to be huge and there's not a lot of space. It's more of a futuristic look than what I would, would purchase. I'm like down home country girl. I actually am looking at this one and I think like this is more my speed is the, it, the decoration in here. Which Does is, it have a bathroom? Um, Let's see. I think this door is. No. That, that, I don't, yeah, maybe. If I just cut these ropes it's, and go in. It's probably a wet bath. Fun. Yeah, oh, right. I, I can't poop where I shower. I don't want to poop where I shower. This is what started us. Th this is. <laughs> this was, is what you were going to buy. I was just telling the girls that this is, this. When this we started looking Jay at RVs. Flight was the type of thing. But when we started looking at RVs, this is the exact one that you looked at. For Even some reason. Bed? Yes, because we didn't know any better. This okay. was the first thing we looked at. We were at Camping World. And even though it had a bunkhouse, you were like, the kids will use it. We didn't know anything about RV. It the is time. so nice. Now, I will say right off the bat, and I ran into somebody at Camping World yesterday who was in the middle of buying an RV. And I was like, please get a double axle. Because he was like, yeah, I think this is just right for me. But this is the one thing I feel like I want to harp on is this is a single axle. I'm a big fan of a double axle. T flat tires will happen, and right now, honestly, it's not a slide that scares me anymore. It is having a single if axle you trailer. If you blow a tire, not just a low tire, if you blow a tire on a single axle, good chance you're going to flip the RV. So my thing is double axle. So we've changed our minds a lot, and I think that that's a common thing. So make sure that you don't just buy the first thing you see, the first thing that looks cool. You really want to, to stretch out like your you know, research on travel trailers so that you can find one that's right for you. And I would advise renting it first before you purchase it.
Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing? I am just making some posts and doing some reading and all the things from my, my, my captain's chair. Sitting here with your cozy blanket. It's, it's just the right level of coziness. You know, you got to find that blanket that's, that has a good feel to it and not too hot, not too cold. You got to love 40% off at Camping World, too. Hello. You're really only sitting out here because you've got a fireplace. <laughs> I do have a fireplace. And that just makes everything better. You're just shoving everything in your little cubby hole up there. I knew I was going to love that little cubby. I said <laughs> it. I called it. I knew that this was going to be my chair. I want that side. No. It's my side. Yeah, but I always get that side. Did I let you choose the side of the bed? Yes, I did. Yeah, but I chose the side of the bed because I get up to go to the bathroom at night. I so appreciate the discussion that we're having right now, which will end with me also still sitting here. <laughs> but I appreciate your input. <laughs> it is Sunday morning, and uh, we had a great night last night it was so much fun and i really appreciate everybody that drove out under such short notice yes from all around in order for us to all hang out together yeah a uh, special shout out to dustin yes simple jackie and jackie jennifer and jennifer for arranging the meetup so we got together what was the name of that place it was Smokin' Fatty's Barbecue in Elkhart. Smokin' Fatty's Barbecue. It was great. It was really good food. And more importantly, it wasn't super expensive. Right. You know, sometimes barbecue can be really expensive. We had, I didn't do any video. We were just kind of hanging out with people. But we had, I ordered a pound of brisket. I ordered a pound of chicken. And a half a pound of shredded pork. We ate it all. In fact, I was still hungry when I was done. It was funny because you hear that, like, three pounds of meat between but, us. But no filler vegetables. But no filler vegetables. And so, yeah, it's completely possible for each of us to eat a pound and a half of meat within a sitting. In fact, when you order it, you're thinking to yourself, like, yeah, I could probably get that down. Yeah. And... And it was, like I said, inexpensive. The entire bill for us was 60 bucks. That's like, reasonable. To me, I feel like that's reasonable for the amount of food that we had. That was a lot oh, of Oh, I also had, they had like a cooked cabbage slaw. Ooh. They said they had sugar in the coleslaw, so I didn't get that. But it was like shredded cabbage cooked, I think it was like in bacon grease or something. It was really, really good. Okay, I did not even get a taste of that. Well, you, I were, did not, you were sitting away from it. We sat at separate tables so we could visit, but yeah, man. Okay, we'll have to circle back around while we're still in Elkhart to get some of that slaw for me. Yeah, it was really good. I would suggest to Smoking Fatties, though, can you offer some stuff not sauced as mm. an option? Like the, so the brisket wasn't sauced. The chicken wasn't sauce, but I really wanted ribs. They didn't have a... I wanted the pork belly. Yeah, they didn't have an option for the pork belly not sauce, and they didn't have an option for the ribs not sauce, so that kind of stunk. And they had Dear. no sausage, and we love... We barbecue love sausage. barbecue sausage. Like a jalapeno cheddar sausage. So, smoking Fatties, if you're watching this, like, let, let's... Let's work on that. Because we're coming back up here several right. times. We were actually talking to everybody that we already know for a fact we will be up here like the last week of May in 2025 because we'll be coming up for the Alliance RV Rally. So excited. So we're going we're gonna, to, now that we know we're going to be here like a year in advance, we're going to like plan a nice big meetup, like maybe the indie meetup or something like all around that. So super excited for that. Um what's on the docket for today i am church working on the rv so we have four batteries from big beard battery they're 300 amp hour batteries i need to mount them underneath our bed um need to get our inverter it wasn't in the box i did speak with todd at big beard batteries and he said the guy said that got shipped separately so i'm hoping that tomorrow maybe it's at alliance rv um, 
or maybe by Tuesday. He said he'll ship me a new one if we need to, but he doesn't have any in stock, so he would have to ship it to my sister's house. We'll see how things go, but i um, super excited about having that whole install. We woke up this morning to a little bit of a glitch. We had no lights. Right. Like the, none of the 12 volt was on. So that concerned me a little bit, and I, I, I'm sorry, I immediately thought, what did you do, Joe? What did you do? I hadn't even touched the system. Turned out what happened was, for some reason, the converter, um, the fuse breaker, like, flipped. I, and I don't know if I hit it or if I did something to make it like flip. So what happened was the batteries were not being charged. And with the batteries not being charged, we turned on the furnace last night. And the furnace uses a lot of battery power. And so at some point during the night, the battery went dead. But I immediately flipped it back on this morning and now it's running. So we get church. I'm gonna work on the RV and then we're gonna do our first cook in the oven. Cause the point of this whole trip right now is try everything shaking down the RV. Make sure everything Test works. it all. We honestly have not found really anything. I mean there was there was a switch that was upside down that was easy to fix. Um other than that, I can't think of I found a piece of seam tape in our bedroom. There's a where there's a bubble. Okay. Like that's that's easy to fix. All they need to do is like reapply a new seam tape on the wall. But we've had no issues, so we need to do that. And then another day this week, we're gonna cook bacon and eggs. There's a lady down the street that sells eggs, so or uh, somebody's selling eggs. So you're gonna go and find out about getting eggs. Yep. We bought all that bacon at Meyer because cheap two dollars and fifty cents a package and uh so we're gonna do that on the griddle probably like tomorrow or tuesday and then today we're gonna use the oven what are we making we're gonna make some spare ribs spare ribs because we definitely got those super cheap i'm used to smoking ribs and when we first got married are you gonna hold it for me yeah uh, when we first got married, Rachel, that the one thing that she was always good at making, like we we joked. The like, one thing I was good at making. Well, you've always said you're you're a horrible cook. I mean, yeah. when we got married, you could barely make eggs. Right, it's true. <laughs> and now look at you. We've got an entire series so even so easy. Rachel can make it, and you're even devising your own recipes. You've I come am. a long way. Thank you. But Rachel was always really good at making ribs. Now. We did them heavily sauced. You used to use like four containers of sweet baby rice. But it's interesting that when you're cooking them initially, though, I didn't cook them in the sauce. I learned how to cook ribs from my uncle. And, um, and, and he always said, don't sauce until the last. So we're going to cook the ribs in the Easy Bake Oven. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have you do it. Let's do it. So we're going to have our first cook and I am so honored that I'm actually gonna do this. And this is a shout out to my uncle Jerry who is no longer with us, but loved cooking spare ribs. And he was definitely the first person that ever uttered the words low and slow to me when it came to cooking. Cause he knew I was not a good cook. And he's like, hey, the best thing you can do is just low and slow when it comes to meat. He loved pork spare ribs. We got a great deal on these at Meyer. They were $2.29 a pound. I cannot go to a restaurant for $2.29 a pound on spare ribs. So all we have to do is I like to salt them generously on both sides of, of the ribs. I've already salted the back of these. And then it's all about just wrapping them in aluminum foil. And then I'm going to put them in one of these uh, pans, these just like throwaway pans. I don't know if it's gonna fit in there. We may have to fold them over a little bit because like you said, it's an easy bake oven. If I had a smoker with me, we'd actually be smoking these, but we need to test the oven out anyway. So this is all gonna be about just checking it after a while since we don't have a meat thermometer. So now that they're all wrapped, I'm gonna let Joe set up the oven. So making ribs inside of an RV oven should be interesting because this is a small oven. Rachel likes to call it an easy bake oven. Some people actually put like a pizza stone right here because that'll help um, distribute the heat a little bit more. The problem is trying to get it at a low temperature because we wanna cook these ribs at a low temperature. So I have the pilot light on and what I'm basically gonna do is turn the gas on 
until it just turns on and we're going to try to keep it as low as possible and then uh, hopefully that'll keep our temperature under 300 degrees not quite sure if we're going to be able to do it i'm going to turn it back a little bit until we can get it on let's see if that'll work and what kind of temperature we get of course all that smoking is because this is brand new so there's going to be probably a little bit of like factory grease in there so we're going to let that burn off for a minute and let's see what temperature do we have that's set at up there probably about 325 we don't have any meat thermometers with us other than an instant read so we're just going to kind of go on this with the wing and a prayer are they going to fit let's see probably going to have to take out no it can't go there and you can't put a rack take the rack out it just fits what are you doing well there is somebody just like a couple of blocks away that are selling eggs out of their home for three dollars a dozen so i'm gonna go get us some farm fresh eggs so that we can use our stove top for the first time so you're gonna ride your bicycle i'm gonna ride my electric bike it's a pretty good stretch of the legs i mean it's it's pretty long out of this campground and and where they live so i'm just gonna take my bike so it's funny we actually like something happened with the lock on our bike and i don't know if it got hit or but the lock came out so i figured out once i got the lock out they sent me a new battery but in the meantime we want to be able to use actually bike. use the bikes so once the lock was out i was able to use a screwdriver to basically turn the battery on so we're just going to leave the battery locked in now but you actually have an upgraded seat i don't know if you know that when we bought the bicycles um it came with upgraded seats but they didn't send it to us in it was like in a different box so i have it on there how is that is that nice and so cushy much, for your tushy so much more cushy for my tushy i will say that i'm pretty bougie when it comes to my seating because i like to be comfortable even if i am doing a little exercising there she goes oh my goodness so we have done all the things this afternoon. I rode my bike. I went and got some eggs from a local backyard farmer, $3 a dozen. Hello, what a deal. Um, I did laundry. Joe's been working on the trailer. And all along, these beautiful spare ribs, which I'm sorry, you're going to have to look at them in the sink because I don't want to make a mess. And you know how there's just like so much juice that is generated. But these guys, to say they are fork tender, <laughs> is definitely an understatement so i'm going to give these guys a try no barbecue sauce and i didn't even have a lot of seasonings i just brought my redmond that's it so redmond salt mm. Mm. you gotta try these joe okay huh melt in your mouth I'm not normally a spare rib person. I like baby back ribs. But the deal was too good to pass. But these are really good. Usually spare ribs are a little bit tougher, but cook them in the oven. I don't even know what temperature. I'm going to say probably around 300 degrees because, again, there's no like digital readout on this oven or anything like that. We don't usually use the oven that much in the RV, but at least it works. The whole point of this was let's check and see if the oven works before we leave Elkhart. It works. Why don't we open up the window shade and get some natural light in here? I do like these because just pull down and let it rise up. Wait, wait, you missed a bunch of stickers. Oh, there's a bunch of stickers that I we need to those come off. For you? I really do like to like pull the stickers and you've taken all the pleasure from me. I am so sorry that I have taken pleasure from you by not allowing you to remove stickers if that is the key to your happiness boy howdy do i want to be a part of that i am really enjoying this like bar area that we have here it is making it so much easier to work because i can like have my second screen here i can have my main computer here this is awesome for our live streaming because we have our camera on a little mini tripod this is becoming a really great workspace we do need to though maybe when we get home go to ikea and find different stools i don't like these stools well you need something to support your back yeah because i'm hunching and i don't like that i need we need a stool and i feel like over time these are they're kind of wobbly i mean they're 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 functional but not 
not the greatest. So if we can find something with a back that's about this height that will, it's got to fit between the slide and underneath. It's got to tuck underneath. Well, we are going to be heading soon to the Amish country. I wonder if we might even find something there. Yeah, they don't have to be padded. Actually, I prefer they not be padded because then we won't ruin them. We need to take down those stickers. We got to take down the stickers. <laughs> I am loving when you're talking about enjoying the bar space as a workstation. I am loving having my like desk, so to speak, right underneath this beautiful window. I just get lots of nice natural light. It's it's really nice to turn off all of the lights and just enjoy the sunshine. I'm a little hungry. You wanna test out the outside grill? Yes, let's do it. Let's get the grill warming up. I actually have to attach it. We haven't had a chance to attach it yet. One of the things that I love about this RV is it's got a built-in grill. So right back here behind here, we have a grill griddle combination. So all you gotta do is do that latch and then it comes out a little bit and then you give it a little pull and it comes out the rest of the way. I have to hook up the propane. So there's this piece right here that is gonna go somewhere on the unit. Let's see. Where does the propane go? Right here. It goes right here. And then down below, there is a propane hookup right there. So what's cool about this griddle is you actually have a griddle side and then you also have a grill side. Well, that's weird. So I'm looking, something's missing. If I was to cook some kind of burger on this, then the grease is gonna drop right down below. So there's definitely gotta be some kind of a pan missing. Let's look underneath. So yeah, there's gotta be something that's supposed to be down there. I'm gonna go ahead and message my contact at Alliance because we're actually taking the RV in for a couple of little things. We really have had no issues with the RV, but we found a couple of little like cosmetic defects that I want them to repair before we leave. Uh, like I noticed one of the balances is like a half inch off on one side over the other. I mean, they're, they're like tiny things. For the most part, everything has been perfect, but we're gonna add this to the list. I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up and then we can cook because we're only gonna use the griddle today. Coming back from doing laundry. I did do some laundry and I found some things from my husband's repairing. <laughs> I gotta remember when you are working on this. This will be garbage. That's a heat shrink piece. When you are working on the trailer, I have to be more vigilant about checking your pockets. So we have a little problem with the griddle. Ruh -ruh, what's on? So what do you see wrong here? You're going to cook on the griddle. Okay. What happens if you it's, cook burgers right there? It's going to fall right through. Yeah. I think something is missing. Yeah, I so, do too. I, uh, I texted Joe over to Lions. He's like, something is definitely missing. We can um We're still gonna some... cook eggs on here because we're gonna try the griddle side. At least we can make sure like the propane works. We can also try the stove top if we need to. Yeah, well, I, it's just that we, we're not gonna cook burgers right now anyway. No. But that would present a really big mess. Okay, first cook on the griddle. Again, we can't use the grill side because something's missing, but we can use the griddle. And what better way to test out a griddle than with some bacon? We actually got this bacon when we were at Meyer, right? Our first trip to Meyer, it was $2.50 per package. Can't be that. So we're just gonna see how much we can fit on here. I think we're gonna cook up the whole package. Though. It's a little windy out here. And I feel like whatever's supposed to be on the bottom would be preventing the wind from hitting and affecting the flame. So hopefully this cooks up right. Sounds good. Sounds like it's cooking. It smells good. Can we fit a whole package? If I could fit a whole package, I'd be pretty impressed, actually. Probably should have laid it out a little bit better. Two more pieces. Can we fit two more pieces? There's always room for more bacon. We'll, we'll skimp it in. It's going to shrink down in a minute anyway, right? 
Okay, we'll let that cook. Okay, we'll go ahead and flip this over. Oh, yeah, bacon. You know what's kind of cool about like being up here in Elkhart? What? I keep like closing the screen door, but there's no bugs. Like no we don't need to close bugs. the screen door. That I really am grateful for because you can open up the door. You're not inundated with mosquitoes. Like I get the appeal. Band for the first cook. Ooh, that looks good. Bottom one is yours with oh dead my eggs. Gosh. There were like four pieces of that turkey, chicken, whatever, so Might I threw it well. on the griddle. It's perfect. Ooh, yeah. Mmm, that's good. Oh, what a long day. It was a long day. And we should have been better about videoing our food today. Well, there wasn't really much to do. I pretty much spent most of the day uh, working on the RV and then editing videos. I finished up my entire battery install. And then, you know, you had done a whole bunch of laundry yesterday and then again Oof. today. Yeah, just trying to make sure everything stays clean because we are in tight spaces. Yeah. So you don't want a lot of dirty stuff all around. And there's not a lot of places to store dirty things. Not like there's room for big hampers around here. So we just try to keep everything clean and tidy. So I made sure everything was clean in the trailer. We did eat some rotisserie chicken because that's like just an easy grab and go option. Yeah, I, we forgot to film it, but we ran up to Walmart and I got a rotisserie chicken. I got some pickles. Pickles. And then we had like a little bit of lunch meat and stuff. I figured that we're going to Lancaster next week. So... Like, we're going to load up on cheese, so I'm trying to limit the cheese Same a little here. bit here and there, you know, but, you know, we've just got so much going on. Now, tomorrow, we have to go back to Alliance, and we're actually dropping off the RV in the morning just to fix some little tiny, like, minuscule things that we we're had mentioned. We're here, so we might as well get it done. And then we're going to be interviewing the owners of the company and then finishing up, like, our tour like seeing some of the things that they're doing at Alliance to make sure that the units are road ready. They have like an earthquake machine and a rain machine and a smoke machine. So I'm really excited to see all of that stuff. Joe, I'm going through a baby gherkin phase right now. I know. I am all about the baby gherkin. So when it comes to pickles, how do you like your pickles? Do you like your pickles in relish? Do you like them like hamburger slices? Do you like long, big pickles or do you like the gherkins? What, are, what do My you... favorites are the bubbies. The bubbies pickles. The but, big bubbies. But big kosher. ones. Yeah. They're... Well, I like their gherkins too, but there's something about those bubby pickles. They're so expensive, but they're so good. Yeah. You know, we always grew up buying the ones that were on the store shelves instead of the refrigerated se section, but now we sort of pop for the bigger better ones when yeah. we can well that is going to be in a video because we have like a lot to do to wrap up for tomorrow because again we have to get everything packed up because tomorrow is going to be a really long day and then thursday we're leaving i can't believe it it feels so, like it's blown by i know we've been on the road for over a week already so. wow well if you like seeing videos like this take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over here also make sure you take a look at our most recent video that i'm gonna put right over there but whether you had this way or you had this way don't forget to head this way subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to Until it next time bye, bye.